sex, it changes everything. It charges your dreams and infects your thoughts. It alters the way you think and the way you act. It can make you pull the trigger. It can turn sinners into saints. It wrecks lives. It creates lives. It makes your neck sweat and your voice break. It has its own drive named after it. It powers art, music, and fictions. It rearranges your focus. It upsets your gaze. It can make you see the world through new eyes. It's a lot like Woodland Park Zoo in the experience you will have at the 1995 AAZPA conference in Seattle. Woodland Park Zoo was not always the zoo that we know today. It began in the 1880s as a private country estate with an unremarkable collection of regional animals. But as early as 1950, Woodland Park Zoo began to develop a reputation for creating innovative exhibits. And we can always believe what we hear on Zoo Parade. Here's Zoo Parade. Today we're going to concentrate on a couple of things at the Woodland Park Zoo that we found especially interesting. The main part of our visit is going to be concerned with one of the most modern exhibits that Marlon and I have found anywhere. The zoo's efforts of immersing zoo visitors in exotic landscapes, letting them come face to face with animals in natural settings, is evident in exhibits such as the African savanna, the much acclaimed tropical forest habitat, and the Martian swamp exhibit. And our newest completed exhibit, the Asian elephant forest, where elephants amble through a natural forest, take shelter in a magnificent Thai barn, or bathe in an elephant-sized pool. By conference time in 1995, many of the remaining projects will be completed for you to see and to share. You'll be able to see the tropical rainforest where you journey from the jungle floor and climb up into the tree canopy. Next to the Asian elephant forest, you'll visit a new extension of tropical Asia, home to the orangs, siamangs, and lion-tail macaques. Also by 1995, you'll enjoy the Northern Trail exhibit, which portrays the taiga, tundra, and montane zones. Finally, you will have the opportunity to visit our new Rotary Education Center, which will include a 250-seat theater, as well as tour our new state-of-the-art animal health complex. Don't miss this opportunity to immerse yourself in the Woodland Park Zoo, a zoo that gets wilder every year. If that's not enough of a reason to select Seattle for the conference in 1995, consider the other tantalizing wildlife destinations you could visit nearby. The Seattle Aquarium, Northwest Trek, Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium, and the Vancouver Aquarium in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'd like now to introduce our mayor who will extend a personal invitation to each of you to join us in 1995. Hi, I'm Norm Rice, mayor of the city of Seattle. I'd like to personally invite you to enjoy a great meeting in one of the world's finest cities, Seattle. People always ask me what makes Seattle so great. Well, it's not one thing. It's a whole lot of things. It's the water, the mountains, the forests, our fabulous hotels, our great restaurants, and all of our other fine meeting facilities. But most of all, it's our people that make Seattle so special. Seattle is a friendly city, a city that cares, and a city with a sense of humor. I think Seattle is a terrific choice for your meeting, but don't just take my word for it. For the next few minutes, we want to show you some of the sights and sounds and flavors that makes a meeting in Seattle unforgettable. Enjoy the show, and I hope to see you here in Seattle. Town, I want to welcome you to my city, Seattle, Washington. It is the espresso capital of the world. Everywhere you look downtown, there is an espresso stand located on every corner there. Now, the idea, folks, is to consume three or four of these high-powered caffeine beverages, then ease out into the gridlock. The sun was out today. That was kind of nice. When the sun is out in Seattle, you can see people going like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
because they spend their money and then they go home. I wish all my relatives were tourists. <laughs> and this space needle, this space needle goes around in a circle. So what? Make it go up and down. Then you got something. Bring me in, yeah. That's a great building. I like going on the Pike Place Market. You see pigeons down there, and I like pigeons because they walk cool. <laughs> oh, you ever notice that bumming food, they got a big fat spokes pigeon at the head of the group? Backgrounds here. There's a, there's a big Chinatown here. And that's where you can learn about all the different cultures and stuff. I used to hang out in Chinatown as a kid and I learned Chinese. Japanese guy learning how to speak Chinese. I learned some. Ne gom what? Ne gom what? That means what did you say? And the little Chinese man in the story, you know, I'd be in there, a little kid going, uh, can I have 25 cents worth of ginger? Little Chinese man. Ne gom what? Uh, 25 cents worth of ginger, please. Ne gom what? Um, can I have 50 cents worth of ginger? Oh, sure, no problem. When I'm away, I miss all the beautiful sights and sounds, like, like ferry boats and seagulls, you know? Hey, you guys, been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, Seattle.